So the first thing you need to do before you even think about doing this gallery wall is figure out what you're putting in your gallery wall. Now, I don't want you to overthink it. I think one of the biggest mistakes you can make is overthinking the process. So pull all of the stuff you love most. So in this case, we might do like a beautiful, like an original piece of, sorry, it goes this way, an original piece of art. And in this case, we obviously frame these through frame bridge and we had them float it since the canvas. A pretty nude painting that's really simple. And then this is actually a watercolor of our office that was done by Tenley, who works with us. And we made certain that we had all different types of frames within the collaboration. So we're gonna sort of touch on that later, but I think what's really important is that it doesn't need to be all the kids' work or all family photos or all original art. You can mix it all up and blend it all up, and we're gonna sort of give you the confidence and teach you how to do that because there is a bit of a method and a bit of a rhythm, but it's not as exacting as you think it is. Part of the beauty of gallery walls is how sort of whimsical they are and um, we find that to be like really like well, part of like most of the beauty. So because Framebridge has the perfect amount of options but also curation, it allows you to confidently have fun with things and it also has a tool where you can see um, what all the different frames look like so you can play around with it which is really nice. So in this case we use gold frames, white frames, and silver frame. All right, so now that you've selected your art and selected your frames, we're gonna give you the tools, the actual tools you need to build the wall. So you're gonna need a pair of scissors, a measuring tape, some scrap paper and or some scrap cardboard, blue painter's tape, very important, Sharpies or another sort of marker, a level for the end to make sure it's all perfect, a hammer and art hooks, obviously. And a hard hat. <laughs> Just kidding, you don't need a hard hat. Okay, so now that you know the art you're doing, you know the frames you're doing, and now you have your tool bag, we're gonna go ahead and start to measure and start to build the wall. So take your tape measure and your blue tape, and in here in our office, we determined that this will be the wall that we're hanging on. So you just figure out how large you want the space to be. So in this case, we thought around 72 by, I think we said around 57. So you can see we've taken it upon ourselves to already tape out, but you would be doing this now where you would then take that measurement and tape it out onto the ground. This is so that you can then fill it in with all your art and uh, see how it all is gonna look together. All right, let's build this thing. So there's a couple things to note here. One is you can see I didn't use the entire area, and that's okay. When we give you measurements and you're thinking measurements, there's always a nice, like there's a lot of space to go a little bit smaller or a little bit larger. So in this case, I like to typically keep the art about two inches apart. That's a nice spread. So I was able to push things in a little bit. Um, and then you step back and you look at your work and see where the imbalances are. For me, I always like to start with like a center piece that's got like a lot of, um, I guess could stand on its own and wouldn't need to be in a gallery wall. So for me in this case, these two pieces in the center are those. So I'm not debating, do I wanna have the piece I put in the center? I sort of wanna see how the color would look in the center since there isn't much color uh, to begin with. So it might be interesting to see how it plays off of it in the center. So I'm gonna move these now that I have my basic layout, I'm gonna move it around a little bit and see if that feels a little better. And for me, I think that feels a little better. All right, so now we've laid out the gallery wall with the art, it's time to do the templates. So we took it upon ourselves to do it before and not to bore you. And you can see we cut a bunch of cardboard, and in this case we use scrap paper because either works. And then you just take the piece of art, this one's smaller. You take the piece of art, you cut, just basically, it doesn't have to be that precise. Like, don't get tripped up about all this precision, okay? That's not what this is about. So you cut it, basically, you label it, like F or whatever it is, and then you label the piece of art F as well. This is gonna give you a lot of freedom to still play. So if when you get it up there, it feels too big, or one piece feels wrong, you can still change it. You don't have to go putting like all these um, 
holes into your wall. So this prevents you from having to basically mess up your walls. That's what these templates are for. Okay, so we put the templates up, you can see. It allows you to move them around really easily if you decide something doesn't look right. So I think what's best is you step back, you observe your work. Also take a photo because it's a different perspective and also make sure you always take a photo of the actual gallery wall so you know sort of what your intention is. So then this makes it easy. If you're like, oh, you know what, this is too low, then you just sort of move it around and you can kind of just like play with it really easily with like, again, without making any of the holes. So we did it. Check out our gallery wall and you can do it too. The last thing is, is the level. So you're gonna take the level and you're just gonna put it on top of each one, make sure it's level when it isn't. You generally can just make little slight adjustments to get it level and won't have to go back in and nail um, things in. But if you do, you do, it's no big deal. Typically the art will cover it. All right, so our gallery wall is done. Now we challenge you to do a killer gallery wall and share it with us. A major thank you to Framebridge for making framing finally super easy. And also thank you to Tenley Maison, who is one of my co-workers and she did most of the art here. So thanks, Tenley. For more design tips like this, follow us at Zoe Feldman Design.